if there's if there's hundreds of young girls who are being kept uh, in a, what must be horrific, and we are worried about the opinion of uh, Good Luck Jonathan, uh, I, I think that uh, the people of Nigeria would welcome the rescue of these young women and the people, young girls. U.S. Senator John McCain says Washington must act in the search for the missing girls in Nigeria. Washington's lending support to the African nation but has not taken control of the search. More than 200 girls kidnapped from a school by a group of Islamic militants called terrorists, really, called Boko Haram. Sun News contributor Tarek Fatah joins us now from Toronto. Tarek, is that the answer, sending in Western troops to take on this terrorist group? This is what I call the strategy of fire brigade stations uh, running uh, every time there is a fire. We've been doing this for 12 years now. I, I think this should be the time they should recognize that unless they start at the core issue of why is it this is happening. I mean, in Pakistan, you've been con uh, people have been kidnapping Hindu and Christian girls and converting them to Islam for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So w what is new? If the Sharia laws clearly state that this is permissible acts in wartime, then Senator McCain or whoever is uh, 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 you know, concerned about that should start over there. You send Americans but over they, there to they, rescue they and it will be over. They don't have a Sharia across Nigeria. And from my understanding, most of the girls still in captivity are not Muslim, or at least they weren't. Uh, so, I mean, how but do you deal with that? But, but here's the point. That's precisely they were enslaved. These are the, the Sharia law that needs to be discussed with Muslims and they should be challenged is that during wartime, the taking of non-Muslim female POWs as sex slaves is permitted. So that, that's the issue. Well, David Cameron leads a country. Great Britain is looking at bringing, allowing Sharia law in Britain officially, not just unofficially, and yet he's out there with his little uh, sign of bring back our girls, hashtag. Uh, he, he doesn't seem to understand what you're talking about. I think they do, but there's a lot of money involved. The Saudis invest heavily in whether it is city bank or whether it is universities, whether it is infrastructure projects or overseas development uh, or consultancy fees of $10,000 a day to many of the retired senators or ambassadors, they've literally bought us like concubines and we're just playing along. I mean, these girls, I mean, what, what's Michelle doing over there with that hashtag? It's not that these girls have disappeared in a coal mine and they need to be rescued. If anyone talks about rescuing the girls without condemning the Sharia laws that permit the condemning of the girls, they're just being hypocritical. All right, that's, uh, let's get to uh, Tom Mulcair and Stephen Harper as one of those gentle moments in question period where uh, Mulcair asked what Canada was doing, and apparently we are contributing something. Let's roll tape. Can the Prime Minister please update Canadians on what assistance Canada is providing to help locate the 300 schoolgirls kidnapped by Boko Haram? The kidnapping of these schoolgirls by Boko Haram is obviously repugnant to everything that we believe in as Canadians, and I think that most people in the world I believe in our hearts are obviously with these girls and their families. Uh, there are uh, Canadian personnel who are uh, now present in uh, Nigeria and they're there to uh, provide liaison and to assist uh, Nigerian authorities in their uh, search. So it, it, that's very basic. There's no condemnation of, uh, of uh, Sharia or Boko Haram, just saying it's repugnant, we're looking for it. But you know, the Harper government goes out on a limb and, uh, and says they're standing with the Democrats in Ukraine and they get blasted for, uh, for being too harsh to the Russians. We live in a culture, Tarek, that doesn't want to condemn Sharia, doesn't want to condemn thugs like Putin that will roll tanks over uh, democratic protesters. There is no room for condemnation in the Western mindset anymore. Well, I think you have to give credit to Prime Minister Harper and Foreign Minister uh, of Canada because in, among the Western countries, uh, they have been the most clear about uh, the threats we face and uh, for whatever mid-level power we are, we have uh, put our money where our mouth is. But for the NDP to ask this question, 
I would have shot back and said, what is the NDP doing about this? Because the number of Islamists that now are involved with the NDP is shocking to me. I mean, I've been, what, 25 years uh, as a card-carrying member, and I see when uh, Mahir Arar's wife works for the NDP at, at the head office, and they have candidates in uh, Toronto being nominated by a known Islamists, uh, that begs the question, if there are people in Canada today who are equivalent to what the Sinn Féin was to the IRA, then we will have to look at the Jerry Adams of our time as well. It doesn't est, start and end with jihadi terrorism. Long before a single jihadi terrorist is born, there are about a thousand people who aspire to be one. That's the reverse pyramid that we live in. And we are not doing anything about it, whether it is Mr. Harakat, it takes 10 years to throw him out. I think we should send him back to Pakistan along uh, with his Chechen friends. Here's the crazy part, uh, Tarek, and we have to leave it at that. If these Boko Haram guys, you mentioned Harakat, one of them gets into Canada, we have to keep him here because he might be tortured in Nigeria. <laughs> Unreal. Uh, good talking to my friend as always. Take care.